Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to put this cute little flower on a towel border. So let's get started. The first step is to measure the width of your towel. This one is 16 inches, then add 2 inches. So I'm going to need to cut a piece of fabric that's 18 inches long. Then determine how wide you want this to be at the bottom. This is about a 5 inch area right here. So add at least another inch and a half to that so that you can hem and cover your raw edges. So after you've cut your piece of fabric out, then you want to go to your ironing board and fold the bottom edge over a quarter of an inch and fold again a quarter of an inch. Then stitch along this folded line all the way across. On the top edge, you're going to stitch a ribbon on the front side. And you've got the raw edge of the fabric going in the middle of the ribbon. So let me turn it over so you can see what it looks like. So your top edge is going to look like this. Then go to your ironing board and then on the ends of your fabric, you're going to fold it over and press. On the towel are these little flowers all over it. So I'm going to mimic this flower right here. So I'm going to show you a real easy technique to make your own little template because I'm not an artist. I can't draw worth a hoot. But there are shapes you can use and easy paper cutting techniques so you can make your own flowers. This is a company, it's called June Taylor, that makes templates. And so if you can afford it, I would buy these little circle templates. I think they go from five inch down to one inch circles. You'd be surprised how often you could use these little circle templates if you like to do a lot of applique stitching. You can also go in the baking department and get cookie cutters that are in the shape of flowers. All kinds of them and you can get all kinds of uh, different other shapes like for Christmas you can get Christmas trees and Santa Claus and everything else. At Easter you can get Easter eggs, tulips. So it's a great place to find your templates if you're really going to get into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this kind of a template. This is a June Taylor template, but this is real easy to make yourself if you don't want to buy the templates or you're having a hard time finding them. You can probably get them on Amazon and also I know you can get them at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. So here's how you do it. Just take some paper and a circle. Take a lid from a jar, whichever one you want to use, and trace around the circle and then cut the circle out. So fold the circle in half, fold it again, and fold it one more time. So you're folding it three times, okay? Then just take a pencil and kind of curve these corners here a little bit. Just a little bit. And then cut these little corners off with a pair of scissors and then unfold it and there you have your flower. Now for the flower that I'm making, I'm making two sizes. I'm making one a little larger and then one a little smaller and they're going to overlap and sit on top of each other. So here are the two templates that I'm using by Jude Taylor. One of them is two and a half inches in diameter and the other one is two inches in diameter. This is the Pellon two-sided pressure sensitive fusible web. It comes in a package of about five sheets. You can buy this at Joann's. You can also buy it at Amazon and other hobby stores probably. So on one side are the blue grid lines. This is the side you want to trace your flowers on. The back side is just plain paper. So go ahead and trace, a, trace onto that side. Then when you cut it out, you want to leave at least a quarter of an inch all the way around. 
For the center of the flower, I drew a one inch in diameter circle also on the fusible web. Here is my fabric. You want to turn it to the back side of the fabric. Take your fusible web and on the back you're going to remove this paper, the plain paper. If you have a hard time removing the paper, just take a straight pin and cut this paper on the back. And then just bend it and when it, the paper pops up a little bit, then you can pull it off. Then take this and put it on the back side and finger press it down. And then after you've done that, now you're going to cut right on these drawn lines. So here is, this is my larger flower, this is my smaller flower, and I'm using white for the very center of the flower. Fold the border in half to find the center and then put a pin there to mark it. So now we're going to take the smallest flower and we're going to center it right in this area. So find your center. Now you're going to remove this paper off the back. So again you need to score this paper by tearing it with a straight pin. Bend till one of the edges pops up. Now you don't want to remove the glue. There's a real thin layer of glue on there. So remove this and turn it over. And remember, try and center it as best you can. There it is. And don't finger press too much right now. Just kind of tap it down. Now I'm going to take my next flower and I'm going to take a straight pin and score it to get that off. Then you're going to lay the flower down. Now I'm going to kind of twist it a little bit to where the little scalloped edges are not exactly super even because I want it to look like it's more of a realistic flower. Okay, once you have it figured out, now I'm just playing with it right now till I get it where I want it. Okay, now once you have it where you want it, just kind of tap it a little bit and then now you're going to put the little circle in the middle and place it in there. And once you have everything the way you like it, then just finger press it all down. Now you're going to go to your ironing board and you're going to follow the fusing instructions that come on the package. So I'll meet you at my ironing board. Now you want to have your applique face up and you're going to place a damp cloth down on top of your applique and you're going to use a hot iron with steam and you just lay it down there and hold it for oh, 10, 12, maybe even as much as 15 seconds. Follow whatever it says on your package. I like to let my applique cool off for a while because the glue still might be a little sticky and you don't want it to gum up the needle in your sewing machine. I recommend when you're doing the applique stitches around the edges that you use an open toe presser foot. There's nothing in front of the needle. The needle is going right down through there and you can see very easily exactly where you're stitching. You can buy these on the internet. You can go on to Amazon.com, enter the name and model of your sewing machine and ask for open toe presser foot and a variety of options will appear. They're not very expensive at all. When you're doing your applique stitches, look at the stitches on your machine and play around with them. I'm probably going to use this small satin stitch. Also adjust your tension. I have a little tight right here so it's puckering my fabric. So always test out your stitches on scrap fabrics first. And you're going to need one more thing you need to put behind the back. You need to either use machine stabilizer 
which comes on rolls like this, or you can use this thin paper, which I got at Home Depot in the paint department. It's a lot cheaper than this, but I sometimes, I'll use both. I'll go back and forth. It just depends on what I'm uh, doing. The paper still works as well as this. So place either the paper or the stabilizer behind your applique. I would advise you also to just put a few pins just so that it doesn't slip and slide while you're trying to stitch. Now when you're doing your applique stitches, you're going along the edge and go slow. If you've never done this before, I highly advise you to practice on scrap fabric first because you don't want to have to rip applique stitches out. It's a very tedious process to do that. So practice first and just go slow around those curves. So I'm going to use orange on the orange petals, yellow on the yellow, yellow petals, and I'm also going to use yellow on the white center. To make your stitching go a little easier for you, I also recommend you use a machine embroidery needle. It has a very sharp point on it and it will go through the fabric a lot easier. Again, it will make your stitching a lot easier. I've just finished my stitches. The only thing I changed was around the center circle there, I decided to use a medium satin stitch and I really like how the flower turned out. After you've completed your stitching, then just turn it over and tear the stabilizer off. Center the border fabric over the bottom of the towel. Now what I like to do is I like to pull this border up anywhere from a half inch to an inch below the edge of the bottom edge of the towel because often the towels are not very even across the bottom so this helps to straighten out that edge. Now you've already got at the end here your fabric folded over a quarter of an inch. Now you're going to wrap it around to the back of the towel. So fold it over and then place pins along here to hold it in place. So place pins all the way down. After you have your sides pinned, then stitch right along this folded edge here and here. Then turn it over and using matching thread of whatever your ribbon is, stitch along this top edge of the ribbon all the way across and also stitch on the lower portion of the ribbon across here so that the raw edges of the border fabric is completely concealed and will not unravel during machine wash. If you are interested in doing other decorative kitchen towel projects, then go to the green screen at the end of this video and click on the links. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Enter your email address, click on that little bell so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!